thoughts on Cruel Boys faction focus tomorrow. Uh, Aaron's here with me. We're gonna talk about it, I guess. Um, but yeah. first, yeah, thanks to my patrons: Pandas Brawl, Ivan Tom, Christian Lance, and Zed Ramirez. Uh, buy some dice. Why Barry makes good art. Check out the links in the description below. It's all, it's all there. So Thank you guys for supporting Moss also for me as well as. Oh, good job do that shit support your creators it's a hobby uh, in a hobby in a hobby <laughs> yeah um i was actually talking the other day about how i don't uh, do a lot of painting anymore and it's because if i have extra sort of time it's doing this kind of stuff right like yeah i mean like i definitely get it. like funny enough my things i just can't build models like i, I love the paint I, I do sometimes do videos and articles and stuff like that and i compete all the time but it's like i just i can't b be bothered to build the models <laughs> right <laughs> I, and I feel the opposite. It's like building the models is the fa my favorite part of that process. Um, yeah, I have all the other things that, that they hook onto. So we're going to talk about like hopes, expectations, fears, and various things for the Cruel Boys right before the Cruel Boys preview comes out, and what it means also because it's a Cruel Boys, not Oracle or Clans um, preview. So, <clears throat> which you know is important. Um, it's a big difference because uh, people have been speculating they might completely separate the two books. We don't know that for sure yet, right? That's, well, I don't know if it's for sure a separated book, but it leans towards that. Well, I think that, I mean, I think we can all agree that if they are going to get split, it's going to be 2025, right? Like summer 2025 when, you know, like uh, it'll it'll mark when Bone Splitters are officially out of the game, when the new Orc book comes out. Yeah. Right? There definitely. won't be Bone Splitters in it. With Beasts yeah. of Chaos, they just won't get a book, right? So it'll yes. be like the timer will run out the one year and that'll be it. But I think we'll I think see Orcs 2025. Be, I, I think you're still going to be allowed to use the index. I might be wrong, but like they're not getting any more books. Um, nothing more getting supported. And the index is probably going to be very weak if it's there. Like, because um, they're just trying to sit this way people from, from being hooked into an army that's going to die. But, yeah, just like they did with Bone Splitters, right? But, yeah, so Bone Splitters is going to be um, faded out. And Big Wah is, is no longer going to be a thing. Uh, which you know both of us have feelings about <laughs> well and i so perspective but we were talking a little bit before we started here right but i think you know the like it's obvious and i th I, I, I get your point that by not having big wa it's going to be a lot easier to balance yeah right and you were also saying and i've heard this sort of in the rumor mill as well that there is not going to be a like uh, any allies yeah so like i I've, i don't know for sure i've seen it a couple of places people mentioning it i don't know where they got the information i don't know for sure if it's true because i haven't cut, read every single page of every single thing but they say they're saying that there's not gonna be any allies which doesn't surprise me given the things they've been showing so far agree big walk going away which is basically a coalition ally thing yeah so like everyone's kind of losing those options and while it does suck for big wall players and people who like allies in one sense because you can't ally units into other armies, you can balance the armies better because they don't have as many... Like, you can't soup in things that end up messing with the balance of an army. Like, yeah. War God Prophet is disgusting with Iron Jaws. Oh, yeah. Um, like, in a sense, they couldn't um, buff a lot of Iron Jaws stuff for a long time because they were worried about how it would interact with Big Wah. Like, Ard Boys and Brutes were, like, pretty bad for a long time, and, but they were really good at Big Wah and really bad in Iron Jaws. Yeah. And stuff like that, um, stuff like the like Dobby for Cruel Boys mm -hmm. um, being allied into Trogs and Ogres made it so they ended up being like super overpriced and it was already useless in Cruel Boys. Like it was already way too expensive for Cruel Boys to play and then the other armies it was good enough. That... So like getting rid of that stuff, it sucks at first to lose the tool in other armies, but like it makes each army end up being able to be balanced better for itself and will i think over the course of like a year or so of them tuning things in end up with a much better balanced meta where more units are viable within their given faction that's my hope at least that's how i see it and i think like i think you're right i think that by sort of pulling everything back a little bit streamlining everything simplifying everything cleaning up everything it's a good long-term strategy for the game mm -hmm. like yeah, it's and, a long -term from the long-term perspective, it's great. From the short-term perspective, it sucks. For yeah, I lose my army. Like, yeah, <laughs> I want to have like Ard Boys in the front and Bolt Boys in the back. Yeah, right. Like, 
<laughs> phenomenal, but but then you have to think like, well, that means that they can't make Bolt Boys too good because part of reasons why Bolt Boys are like not cheaper is because you can do that. Whereas like having a super squishy Cruel Boy stuff in the way is a big glaring weakness that the enemy can do something about. When you have a big thick ass beefy orcs in the way, like yeah, Bolt Boys become so much better that you can't print the price so look at it this way big was going away but that probably means bolt boys we can be gonna get better um well bolt boys so. were one of the only units in cruel boys i feel like never went down in points yeah they stayed they, at 120 the whole time they probably should have gone down in points at some point where some other units ended up being like god's reckon it being way too good whereas like like at least for me at the end of the season i was running less and less bolt boys because other stuff was just so good because it got yeah. so cheap i wasn't running bolt any bolt boys like they did their job but they were just inefficient they died way too easy yeah um, by the end i was kind of like after they split the the battle tactics for cruel boys and iron jaws and i was firmly in the cruel boy general camp right yeah. and then it was like well it's gonna be like and i was like firmly into the swamp call of shaman as the general and then i started to think about more bolt boys yeah right? but so, yeah, push, you know, that's how much it took to get it because they were just but you couldn't balance them properly because if they got too cheap and big was the super strong units up front it was like a little nasty well i was kind of hoping that instead of getting rid of big wad that they would have just like added clauses to the different orc war scrolls and just to say like if this unit is part of an iron jaws army then it gets to do this right but like whatever big was gone i gotta <clears throat> i gotta get over it I'm gonna play Iron Jaws and Cruel Boys, I guess. I, you know, I went from three armies down to two, but say that e, right? That's how it's gonna be. Sorry, you just lagged out. You want to say that again? Who knows? Like, but there is that option of like writing the rules in such a way where they don't interact. Like, cause like the battle tactic stuff was silly before, where it's yeah, like it was yeah just five guaranteed tactics every game was like, oh it was okay. so good this is this is really good but not in the way that's fun to be good agree like agree like i get it and like i would play games with people as big y and i'd be like yeah like big y is one of those like have battle tactic armies and i'm gonna score my five tactics yeah like i'm going easily. to get five tactics in a grand strat yeah um, and there's not much you can do to stop me nothing you can really do about it unless i mess up like or you do really really good yourself but um, um so Cruel Boys is coming out, the, the, the preview is coming out tomorrow, and I've heard that it's one of the best designed, most fun indexes. I don't oh, have any other details than that. All I've heard is that, but. Please. Like. I've been told that it's fantastic. It's really well written, which I don't know what that means. Yeah, <laughs> me neither. But it gets me excited because I know they, I know that like they've learned a lot from when it came out. Like. The army's identity was kind of muddy and um, didn't really feel like cruel boys should. And I've got some like theories, but I want to hear some of your ideas. Like well, what you think might happen. I've been thinking about it all day and I didn't get anywhere because here's my sort of, here's my, my problem. Here's my thinking, right? That if like the army was bad, right? Like cruel boys were just kind of bad. They, they yeah. sat at the bottom of the meta they were a race to the bottom in points kind of army. So uh, can you just take the things that sort of already exist and shift them and move them around in such a way that they're good now? So like, for example, I feel like the Cruel Boy Wa is actually a decent rule. Fighting three units in a row is, it feels Cruel Boy-y. It does, I right? agree. Right? And, and, I, I, and I like it. It's strong. It's a good ability. Um, and then the dirty tricks as an idea, I think is a really good idea. Being yeah. able to pick like, I, being able to pick from a list of things after deployment, after you know who's going first, it's like the best possible moment to pick something like this in terms of like just the, the game's flow. Yeah. But the I mean, dirty tricks just say, sucked. 
I will say that um, it should be the other way around because from from a lore perspective and from like the flavor, in my opinion, it's stronger the way it is. But well, in some ways, actually, it's about it's about a wash because doing it first also changes how you deploy. Blah, sure. blah. But it's like but, your opponent gets to you get to see all the information. But like having dirty tricks set up is something that like you as a schemer would do before you know how the army's gonna like story wise. Sure. Like, whatever. That's a that's a there, there's also ways you can frame that. But I I do think you could you could take what they have now and improve it and get rid of a lot of the if and the but and the except yeah and just make dirty tricks. tricks good like just make dirty tricks at least like it should be d3 instead of three four pluses like just at least let me have an least ability maybe sometimes it's stronger but even other. even d3 in my view wouldn't be very good right i it's like i, I don't I thought, I thought they were pretty strong if you could roll at least one four up like tactically there's a lot of cool stuff you can do with them it's just that you never know you can base your entire deployment upon like well if i could pick up one unit with this ability put into reserves i can do all sorts of cool stuff and you well, do that super sneaky and you sell up and then you just get none and you're like well, right that's well, well what i, I meant is like instead of picking like instead of picking d3 dirty tricks oh right i just want to i want to know how many i can like you know what i mean like i think we just miscommunicated there a little bit but like yeah. i everything you just said i agree with right like yeah. it's like pick d3 units okay i at least get one guaranteed one. right that's and fine they, they, they probably have to drop the power level on some of them a little bit up, up on some of the others but like just knowing you have at least one like knowing at least you have at least one covered in mud if you pick it is like night and day difference but it just sucks from like a from a fun perspective balance life too but from a fun perspective like not getting to use your cool ability because you couldn't roll four well, then it, then you began. have no allegiance abilities you have no yeah. battle traits just mortal wounds on sixes to hit which is like weird well and so <laughs> i think that i think we can also agree that venom encrusted weapons is just going to be gone because Probably. well one of, one of two things is going to be true either it's going to be on individual war scrolls it's going to just say crit mortals right or yeah so i my prediction is that venom encrusted weapons is not going to be an act like a like a bat like an allegiance ability and it it will exist on some but not all of the cruel boy war scrolls. i personally wouldn't place a bet that, that will happen I, I think it's a decently good chance i would like if that happened though because i think it's not an interesting rule it's not it's fun not. and it does a bad job of telling the cruel boy story so to speak through gameplay like it's it's just damage output which is like it's cool to like rolling sixes is fun and doing mortals but like if it was if it was just on sludge raker gives an aura of that that'd be funny right so I right i can that. see that right sludge raker has if you're holy within 12 inches of this unit you have you crit dead. mortals on your spears and with like the three and, different possible and you can have swamp college right? problems do the same thing when they put it on the units like Right, um, I could, like that could totally be a thing, and I would love it if that's the case because that would, because again, the army was balanced in a weird way where it's like you had to balance it around the fact that you could just roll like eight sixes, yeah, and just, just blow you off the table immediately. Um, but like, usually you didn't, so it was like annoying because, like, that's why I made it so hard to win tournaments with them is because you'd have like three great games and then two games where you just didn't roll good, and therefore you just lose, yep. Uh, but but you're right. It's it's like it's because I've seen crit mortals on other war scrolls from other factions, but it feels like it's at not least from my perspective yeah. so far. They've definitely been damping down on the amount of mortal damage that happens. Yes, and having an entire army that does mortals all the time doesn't fit in that well with how I've been seeing things come out so far. So that actually. You're starting to sell me on maybe it might they might make that change because what removing venom encrusted weapons? Yeah. Oh, it's definitely gone. Well, and and for me, like it was, it's a very simple argument of like they're trying to just put things on war scrolls instead. Yeah. And the allegiance abilities for all the armies is shrinking. It could just be dirty tricks are the only allegiance ability, but they're better. Yeah, um, dirty. I, that was sort of my first thought was dirty tricks and cruel boys wah we'll yeah. get those two rules right yeah Dirty tricks will get rewritten and be better while might still be exactly the same because it's good as it is and it's, venom yeah. encrusted weapons will disappear and be on some but not oh, all war scrolls like i i doubt that gut rippers have yeah. venom encrusted weapons 
Yeah, that makes sense. Right? It's like they, they just won't have it. And maybe the Swamp Kala will give crit mortals, right? And if that unit already has crit mortals, it'll be crit mortals on fives and sixes. Yeah. Like, I could see that. What happening. do you think they're going to put as their uh, preview War Scrolls for it? Like, That's a really good question. I think I Swamp think Kala Shaw. Probably. probably Bolt Boys, too. Like, yeah. They're so iconic. Like, they have to preview that. At, well, there's going to be four, right? Yeah. So like, but those those two feel like Swamp Call Shaman and them feel pretty much guaranteed. Yeah, maybe God's Rack. Um, They've been showing a lot of wizards and priests. Like they I have been showing like... wizards and priests, and a couple sometimes like iconic special characters have shown up where it's like this is like showing a new direction. And if they're doing a lot of changes right. in their direction, then like God's Rack would be a great way to show something like that. Yes. Um, and also he's a character that I would like to see changed a bit. I would. I just want to make sure that I still get to play him because I love the model and I love the spell lore and I love. Yeah, like, like I just love him, right? He's super cool, and I like his identity. And uh, my camera. I, I hope he uh, changes a little bit, but not not. I like what he does, but I hope they just make him so he's not just a once per game three d six. Because like before this GHB, he was just like super awkward. Yeah. And it'd be like plus two to unbind, no bonuses to cast. Because you only have plus one to unbind a lot of things. And plus one to cast unbind. If he was just unbinds, that would be kind of cool, in my opinion. But, uh, Do you think we'll that you would play him, like, if we just removed primal dice, and would you play him for 240 points just as he is, if there was, like, a different in GHB? In certain builds, probably. But I like, think I would. I think he's fast. He's a 240 point monster he's very cheap it's just like wizard he can move himself i don't know if you ever, ever played him before primal dice but uh, like probably not because like, i did a couple times and he was just not like he dies to a stiff breeze and yes. without being able to consistently like the difference of having primal dice was basically when you have primal dice he your hero your enemy's hero phase doesn't exist they just don't cast spells when you don't they just ignore him um, and it's like night and day difference because when you don't have it, then like the chance of taking D6 is like very low, very, very low. Um, so they just like, okay, sure. I'll just ignore him. I was cast anyway. Um, whereas when they have the primal dice, it was like, I can't cast spells. So it was like the impact he had in the game was just night and day. Oh, it so was bonkers. I, yeah. And with the GHB going away, I'm hoping that they just make him a little bit, a little bit tankier because five up save is nonsense for a big ass monster like that well you can um, get, you can leave him with a five up safe just give him a five up ward yeah or five up ward right so like yeah five up ward. A, little bit, a little bit tougher than what he is right now because right now it's just like anything kills him yeah or just some protection against like spells or something right like he, so yeah. panda he in, more, right like yeah panda in the tw in the twitch chat says that um he hopes that his uh niche is anti-wizard yeah and, and i can agree with that he, he is right now, but he just is the way, the exact wording and timing and like the once per game aspect of it takes away from that. Whereas he should be like an ongoing control piece as opposed to like once per game of a 3d6. Right. Like so a, maybe a like he doesn't deal mortal wounds on unbinds, but he always gets a 3d6 unbind. Yeah. Or he just always has a no, a, always has a bonus to unbind. Or I could see him being game. cool where it's like, if he's within this distance, he gets a 3d6 unbind. Yeah, right. or they have minus to cast if they're within this distance. Right. Or so like, yeah. like, that. like a more continuous effect. So he's not this like once per game little like sniper rifle thing that doesn't. Yeah. I wonder, it just, it's, just kind of like, it's one of those things that Cruel Boys has in so many, so many things where it's like, yeah, that once per game thing, if you do roll good on it, great. If you don't, it's once per game and it really yeah. dice reliable. Um, so hope a lot of that I'm assuming is changing. So this is like one of those things that we're hoping for, right? We'll have to, um, after we get the full release in July, we'll, you and me will have to sit down and see if any of our cruel boy reworks were <laughs> yeah, <laughs> accurate right, at I'm all. Curious, I'm curious about like how much stuff I maybe like predicted, maybe the movement of it going towards one yeah. thing that I'm, that I was talking with a friend about and like, because they're basically like squatting BOC, it would be interesting if they end up taking some of those ambush mechanics and putting them in cruel boys instead. Oh, because okay. That'd be like such a good, um, like fitting flavor wise thing. Like it's exactly what they should, they should be doing what BOC does. Well, like specifically from BOC, what should they be doing? 
Well, like that kind of thing where you get to start with like a bunch of units off the table and you're coming in and doing things from off the table edge and disrupting people. Right, kind of like, like, like um, like, work, like where you pull people, like pulling people to the board edge, all that disruption stuff. Like that's very cruel, Boise. Well, it's stuff. You're, what you're describing is a super sneaky and disappearing act. Yeah, so it's so like, like a, it's like better versions of those things. It's that sort of stuff, but like BOC has a lot of rules like that, and BOC is getting squatted, so it would be cool. And I think there's a not a, not a zero chance zero chance if they get some rules that are kind of like that, like coming off the board edges and doing things, yeah. um, which I think would be really cool. And I think would be really fun, and a lot of opportunities for cool stuff you can do with that. Panda um, in chat says more teleports. I gotta say, it feels like Iron Jaw shouldn't have teleports, and Cruel Boy should. And yes. I, I can get behind that. I could see Cruel Boys having like, like I could see, for example, Super Sneaky being a dirty trick and wording something like, "Pick one regiment. That regiment, if it hasn't been whatever, like you pick up the regiment and move." It could be put into reserve before the game begins. Like sure. And then and it gets full argument. Yeah, like that'd right. be cool. And then it comes um, in like either, you know, within close to a piece of terrain or, you know, at a board edge or something, right? Yeah. And like, you know, it was like regiments. Like, what sort of stuff would you like to see or think they might put in for regiments? I don't even know. I mean, I think like the reserve thing you were just saying was super sneaky is there, there probably should be a regiment that does something like that. Cool. Like, the yeah. Table edge, right? Sorry, um, you're, probably... you mean battle formation, right? Like the sub faction. Right, yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah so all new, too. all new terms we have to learn. Yeah. Health, mortal damage. Yeah. Mortal damage. I've, I've I've started to say mortal damage. I'm, I'm correcting my term all <laughs> the time. I'm, I'm working on it. Um, yeah, the battalion stuff. Um, I'm, there's probably gonna be some sort of like trappy one that like, because you know how like um. The, how gut rip is used to work where they have like the anti-charge the nice one there's probably gonna be something kind of like that they're, like laying booby traps around like, i hope so i want to see like i've always i've always said this but like gut rippers are the anvil <laughs> right yeah um and so they they're obviously not going to be a high health or a high armor save they need to be a you get minus to charge you yeah you I fail mean... charge rolls to get us we're not where you think we are we're, we're disappearing in the mist. You thought yeah. we were here. Have you ever, did you read or listen to the audiobook Dominion? No, I did not. You should, because Cruel Boys are the antagonist in that book, right? It talks about yeah. how it le they lead the Stormcast through the swamps and and it it's very Cruel Boysy. Like it really gives you that, that sense. Yeah. Right? And that's know. what they do. It's like you hear them in the, you hear them laughing over there. And there's a moment in the book where the Stormcasts are like, there's laughter coming from all around us. And then one of them says, well, which direction do we not hear laughter coming from? Let's go that way. And then that's how they get out of the mist. Right? Oh, that's, yeah. And it's like, that's kind of what it's supposed to be like. It's like, they're over there, charge, and then you run in, and there's nothing there. Yeah, they're just messing with your heads all They're the just time. messing with you. So you thought they were here, but really they're there. You charge in, but they get to like roll a d6 and subtract that from your charge roll. With right? the rework that I had written, like a lot of the rules kind of su support that, like with the bonuses to redeploys, right. um, stuff which they like that. Which they have a little bit of, right? Like We have a little bit of it, yeah. And I think, and, and I'm hoping, hoping that they lean farther into that, like that more abilities related to that type of stuff. Yeah, like, I would love to play I think that. They will. Like, I, from, like from the direction I've seen on a lot of things like, and leaning away from mortal wounds and venomous venom crusty weapons probably going away like almost definitely going away or at least changing in how it's applied um i th i would expect to see a lot more rules like that and less damage oriented stuff um and i'm really i'm i'm pretty i'm pretty excited about it um i'm i mean obviously i'm just all speculating but like i'm, I'm pretty high hopes for tomorrow i had oh. low hopes for Slanesh, and Slanesh uh, did not disappoint in in um having low my low hopes met exactly i didn't check him out but yet. The hope also doesn't disappoint and meets my high hopes <laughs> so where did you hear because i mean like it's weird because like i get because obviously because of like the youtube stuff like i get like people bring information to me like i i sort of just for orc stuff i i'm like a little bit of a hub 
of like gossip and chatter and people are like oh like i heard this from my local game store guy but where did you hear this that the the book was supposed to be really good or the uh the preview was supposed to be really good oh I, like I, I was giving no details about it i just i all i heard was just because i know some people who okay uh oh Anything else other than that, like that it's gonna be fun and it's one of the better written ones. Um, well, you know, I, I, I'm just going off of like if someone else's impression, um, and they obviously can't tell me anything. So, um, we're due, Pro Boys well, are like, due. I heard, heard it's gonna be good, um, and it's kind of always keeps it indirect, um, that sort of stuff. So, I can't really like don't don't quote me on it, but that's, oh, of course, and I guess, like, I guess we'll. Casual, uh, so they yeah, said we'll 24. Tomorrow if that's cool. Yeah, we got to wait another week for Iron Jaws, right? Yeah. But, uh, which is perfect for yeah. me because I get to make five videos on Cruel Boys before I get to make five videos on Iron Jaws. Sorry, one sec. Toddler aggro. But a lot, a lot of the, like, that I'm getting is also just kind of like second tell me like oh i saw this somewhere and this source is saying so many things that it's like are they true are they not like it's kind of hard you only know once you know but just certain things keep repeating like the no allies thing i've heard that from like numerous people yeah yeah i don't know what source that is um because there's just so much stuff that i'm like it's hard to keep up on all the things that are happening um but i've heard that from like a bunch of a bunch of people on twitter stuff sure like that. like but I feel like so far yeah. all of the faction focuses have been have been like generally really good, except for like two, maybe three. All the rest have been like, this is like good, like and well written. Um, I felt ogres was underpowered. Good. Like I I didn't like ogres. Ogres, Slanesh, and kind of daughters of Cain, but only kind of. Yeah, um, I well the thing with daughters of Cain is I know that in the daughters of Cain book right now that there's ways of like speeding up that like five battle round progression like where you get them earlier probably right and like, so i feel like that'll exist still it, you know there'll be a battle formation that's like increase it by one and then all of a sudden yeah. it's like suddenly it's good right like that's getting that's, important that's, bumps that's on turn three and i'm like i feel like there's going to be a lot of the stuff that you're missing is going to be on war scrolls and abilities like yeah it's going to be there and um, people are saying, oh, it's still going to be both snakes. I'm like, I don't agree because none of them are actually double shoot anymore. So, like, it's not really... That's, that, that's what made them the build forever. Like, I don't think it's going to be like that. I think I think it's going to be better than people think it is, but I do understand where they're coming from on it. I'm just Slanesh so nervous. Looks, <laughs> and, uh, Ogres is just boring. Like, the War Scrolls are probably going to be good, but the Allegiance is just boring. But everything yeah, else looks they amazing. are. Like, the Allegiance abilities were quite... It's like two up D3 mortals... And it's it's that like new two up where it's a D three two up, yeah. Right? So like it's, yeah, it's it, funny you have to change the way you think because if I say two up D three mortals, what we all think of is two up on a D six. But now it's like well, there's a thirty three percent chance of failure now. It was actually a slight buff over the previous way they're doing a lot of those things. It used to be roll two up and then do D three mortals. Now you right. don't, you can't roll it, so you're a little bit higher chance of doing more damage. Overall. Well, but, it's, but it's, isn't it's, that but like just I'm not a math guy. Can... But does that sounds that sounds wrong to me because it's like there's a one in or there's a five out of six chance that you'll deal some damage, right? And now there's a sixty six percent chance that you'll deal some damage. No, it's usually on two up, but with them it's, it's on three up. But with with most things on two up, like D, on a roll D three on a two up, you do D three mortals basically. You do you're doing that much damage. Before yeah. it was almost always roll a two up and then you can roll a d3 so it's it's technically on average a little bit more damage but it's barely this it's mostly just to remove an extra dice roll that wasn't needed yeah and it's it's uh, a good it's a good change yeah i like, like I, it but I like, like things like that it's just, well it's simple or just boring like it, it's i mean the war shows might be interesting but it's dead simple like to a to a degree where it's like they could have given them something you know and maybe war scrolls have a lot of rules on them but not what we saw but you know who knows? That's the right, right place to have the it's rules. Not great. It's not looking great for them, but like literally like every other thing I've seen, except for them and Slanesh, has been like, this is great. Slanesh is interesting, at least it's just bad. But it's interesting. So, <laughs> and there's things to get excited about, even if there's things that are frustrating. 
So we're thinking Swamp Call a Shaman, Bolt Boys, and then what do you think? There's, uh, there's two more. Hmm. I think we'll I mean, see if gonna, some if monsters. The the um, the Snatcher Boss would be the make would make the most sense if they're going to change how Venom Encrusted weapons works to show how it's going to apply now. Sure. So if there are changing Venom Encrusted weapons, I if I was the writer would put um the swap the uh, Snatcher Boss and show that rule or something like that um and then probably make sure Garp is for the uh, Avengers Hobgrots uh, for the Spearhead thing. Right. Yeah, but I like I, I don't know about you, but I don't really care about Spearhead at all. Well, I'm actually going to be doing some tournaments in Spearhead. I'm pretty excited about it, funny enough, because there's cool things about it that I like. Um, yeah, like I'm not like I would never say that it's not going to be. I hope it's really good. I hope it's really fun. But for me personally, it just doesn't. It just doesn't. Yeah, it's to like me. a side version of the game. The cool thing yes. about it is that you can run it and have like six rounds, seven rounds in a single day. Yeah. And you can just get the games in and that's fun. But um, I'm kind of. Like I'm kind of feeling though like from the rules that i've seen and from like the battle reports that i've seen on spearhead that it's going to be a low skill ceiling game i mean you're only playing with so many models and stuff like that like I'm, yeah like and definitely it's, like, it's not going to be like the main gt type um thing but a, a lot of terminal guys are excited to run like side events and cool stuff like that yeah. with them because it's so quick it's like hour-long games and again um, so, I, I hope know, it's good and i hope everybody has fun with it for, like the 40k one they didn't really support it and people like and they didn't do a good job of balancing it and stuff like that um this one looks more supported more thought out and it it's a good it's it's a it's better i don't play alternate games for the most part because i don't time but i might get a spearhead game because i I, am, I usually end my rounds of tournaments in like an hour and 15 minutes like i'm because I'm you play cool boys <laughs> and i and uh, and some that show it's like a lot of times like bam and iron jaws and I'm, I'm good at ending games quick so like i usually have like two and a half hours after round one right i'm just floating around so playing spearhead games is like probably something i'll be doing but i definitely see why you wouldn't be but it, the previous i'm do you know if the spearhead rules on the war scrolls are going to be the same no they're different they're different right yeah, yeah they, so it's they have, can't really take the yeah. spearhead rule and i thought so but i wasn't sure well that's why i'm not that interested in it is one of the reasons is because it's it's just a, it's a different game yeah and i'm down. and yeah. i'm like all in on match play age of sigma right, right? people yeah. have called yeah. me on this before but i'll say like oh it's not really age of sigmar right and it's like well no yeah. it is and it's like right right it is but it's like to me it's not to me it's like spearhead it's, it's not AOS. It's certainly not the, yeah it's certainly not the main game right um, so like i'll play spearhead like i'm gonna play when it comes out i'm gonna play with my family i want to play with my wife the idea of having it on the side is a cool idea. I have a I have a friend that plays with me all the time. He lives down the street. I could see a weekday spearhead game kind of deal, right? But uh, yeah, we'll see. I, if it's I, super fun, like I, I'm, I'm open to change my mind. Right? That I, that's got me excited. So I want to mention. I I've, I've heard talk of people wanting to do team tournaments as spearhead because it's a great way to get to play against like ten teams over the course of the event, and like I think it's actually a great format for teams. But for singles, it's got to be 2,000 point um, standard. Like we'll just see. Regular, it's got to be that. Like, for me, it's going to come down to. Of, is this like a high skill ceiling game? Like, is the play is the yeah. better player going to win all the time, or is it going to come down yeah, to dice rolls? If it comes down to dice rolls, <laughs> right? It's not really good. Format. Yeah, because yeah, like, it's like I've been stomped by players that just outskilled me, and I've stomped players that I've outskilled, and it's a good feeling both ways for me personally yeah it's it like is. holy geez you're so much better at this than me how can i improve and what what lessons can i take away from this game right so anyway I'm i gotta go i got uh my my family's bugging okay. me we got we got dinner ready so yeah, I was on set, I was on like five minutes too so yeah perfect right. so hey talk, yeah Man. for sure and we should we should hook up again maybe tomorrow or the day after maybe this weekend or something yeah I and talk yeah. about the what actually comes out and compare what we thought about it. Yeah, I got to sure, I got to milk like ten videos out of these <laughs> these things tomorrow. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But like, it's All just right, it's just fun to talk, right? Like, I just enjoy uh, when you have the time to sit down and chat about this kind of stuff, right? So, yeah, it's really fun to discuss. So, and it's great. Sure. I say great video, but also some interesting stuff. But uh, I'll let you go. It was a good talk. Then we'll talk about what stuff comes out tomorrow and let, let that get going. So, absolutely. Thanks again for your time like 
Oh, jeez. Ten videos? <laughs> hey, I don't make videos for the sake of making videos, okay? I don't do it. I make videos because I like to do it. I like to talk about it. That's why I haven't been making very many, very many videos lately, because there's not, in my, for me, there's nothing super exciting to talk about. But tomorrow, with these little things, like, I'm really pumped, I'm terrified, it's gonna be, I'm gonna, jeez. Oh, like, am, am I gonna get up early at like six o'clock in the morning just to look at them? Oh, uh, help me, help me Lord, help me Gorka Morka. Like, subscribe, wah.